On the opposite end of the spectrum is the high final approach. In this case, potential energy is too great. While high final approaches provide greater obstruction clearance, an approach that is too high can lead to overshooting the runway or end in an attempt to dive for the runway at the last moment. Like the low approach, pilots easily recognize high approaches by referencing the visual glide path indicators. Again, experience and use of an aiming point will guide a pilot to recognize the situation early and determine if the expected touchdown point will be made. If the aiming point lowers in the windscreen, the aircraft will overshoot the expected touchdown point. Once recognized, it will be important to quickly correct for the excess energy. If flaps can be increased, the extra drag will steepen the approach path. In many training aircraft, the change in downwash from the flaps will increase the angle of attack on the tail and requires a change in control pressures. If flaps are already at the desired setting, the next option is decreasing power. A reduction in power requires lowering pitch to maintain the appropriate airspeed. Once on the proper approach path, increase power to avoid transitioning to a low approach. The Airplane Flying Handbook warns of excessive sink rates and defines an excessive sink rate of greater than 800 to 1,000 feet per minute. If such a rate is experienced at low altitude, the best course of action is to go around. During normal landings, the recommended approach speed is published in the POH or, lacking this reference, generally about 1.3 times your power off stall speed. This gives an adequate buffer from stall without excessive speed brought into the roundout. If the approach is made too slow, the aircraft will be operating precariously close to stall and in an attitude that makes it difficult for the pilot to properly judge altitude and sink rate for the timing of the roundout. Depending on pitch and control usage, the aircraft may stall or sink rapidly. Recognizing deviations from the appropriate airspeed is easily accomplished by reference to the airspeed indicator. This should be a quick reference, however, as fixation on the airspeed indicator during an approach can be just as dangerous as flying the improper speed. Other references, such as noise, control feel, and appearance can also give clues as to the pilot's speed management. When it becomes apparent that an approach is too slow, the pilot should immediately increase power to reduce the sink rate, prevent stall, and accelerate the aircraft. If the aircraft is on the proper approach path, but slow, increasing power and some increase in forward pressure to re-establish airspeed is required. If slow and low, maintain pitch attitude while the aircraft accelerates until re-intercepting the proper approach path. There is a point where the pilot must determine if a go-around is the safest course of action. There used to be a saying in aviation that went something like, add five knots for friends and family. That was meant to help grease the landing. The only problem is that approaches made too fast will likely cause floating and directional control issues. The appropriate airspeed for the conditions derived from the POH, as well as environmental issues such as gust factor, must be considered and followed. Once the pilot determines that the approach is too fast, reducing power and increasing pitch will help reduce speed. The increased attitude will help slow the aircraft while the power reduction will help prevent too much altitude from being gained. If too much airspeed is carried into the roundout, the aircraft will float. This means that the aircraft hangs in ground effect while the pilot attempts to achieve the proper touchdown attitude. If the aircraft is forced onto the ground, a number of other hazards such as poor directional control, perhaps a bounce, a balloon, or wheel barrowing on the nose wheel can occur. If there is a crosswind, the extra time spent in the roundout compounds all of these problems, not to mention the extra runway used during this time. Properly correcting this situation requires careful judgment of speed and height. The pilot must continue the roundout and establish the proper landing attitude before touching down. In doing this, the pilot will overshoot the intended landing point. The Airplane Flying Handbook stresses, if a landing cannot be made on the first third of the runway or the airplane drifts sideways, the pilot should execute a go-around. 
This video has included a number of techniques for recovering from various energy mismanagement situations that can occur during the approach and landing phase. Not enough emphasis can be placed on going around should the approach become unstable or unsafe. Sometimes the best landing starts with a well-executed go-around. The success of each of these recoveries is dependent upon starting from a stabilized approach. With all this said, the trick is not to overthink the approach. Develop and then trust your instincts. Aerodynamic knowledge and understanding are tools to accelerate this development of skill. Pilot judgment must be carefully crafted and developed so you can continue to have fun and fly safe.